Welcome in folks, it's a four piece here today. Four videos up here for me to react to. First one up here, JP Morgan is bullish on Elf Beauty. They're saying buy, buy, buy Elf Beauty. Okay, so we're gonna get into that one. I wanna watch that and react to that one with you guys here today. Obviously it's one a stock I own. Then we're gonna get into this one, Meta trading at all time highs. Looking forward to getting into that one. Speaking about Meta, where we can go from here. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and get into this one. Apple lays off over 600 employees. First significant round of job cuts since Rona. That should be interesting and then last one we're going to talk about jobs numbers some good and some bad here and it's important you understand both sides of that okay now first off i understand i shaved okay big news big news break the internet okay uh yeah i know man i think i got what 10 years younger maybe five years younger seven years younger 20 years younger i don't know maybe not that much okay but uh yeah it was amazing what a shave can do for you sometimes right appreciate you guys joining me as always make sure you smash that thumbs up button make sure you subscribe here to the channel if you're not already it's free to do that also we are now nine days in countdown from the deal of your life the one day tax break jailbreak sale is coming 69 bucks you get access to my number one stock market course ever become master stock market access to see the moves i'm making my patreon portfolio which i made three moves in the patreon portfolio here today plus get access to the patreon discord chat nine days away folks pin comment down there enter your info we'll send over that deal as soon as it drops let's go ahead and get into this high conviction pick adjusting its estimates now above the high end of the company's updated guidance for full year 24 they add that a recent pullback triggered by some cautious industry comments this week from ulta make now a good time to get in price target 197 joining us the analyst behind that call jp morgan's andrea Teixeira, one of institutional investors top ranked analysts four years running andrea great to have you it has been a bit of a confusing week in light of the ulta comments uh, talk about where you see elf and then the broader industry too thank you carl um basically what we look at uh, elf is to continue to gain share over the the mass market for cosmetics and not only that bringing in more market share at Walmart. They're getting more shelf space. That's a public information. Also getting in uh, international. We just recently launched in Italy and expanding abroad uh, as well. Other countries within uh, the, um, the European community, which kind of will embrace given their strong um, following in social media. Boom, that's very important because they're, they're just entering really Europe uh, now and they, they have massive expansion there. But how are they able to be successful? You know, your new brand in a new country, in a whole new area, right? How, how can you be successful? Very simple. Elf's products go viral all over the internet. So people are aware of Elf that don't just live in the United States of America, that live in uh, the UK, that live in France, that live in Italy, right? People are aware even in Asia of Elf's uh, Beauty's products because these videos go viral on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube, and obviously those, those have, uh, you know, complete audience range all over the world. What's the, uh, the competitive advantage that you see for Elf, especially in just an increasingly competitive space, uh, various price points I know for consumers, for uh, just the overall beauty space in general, where do you see Elf playing a role uh, in the current environment? Yes, Leslie, I think the most important thing for, for ELF is bringing um, first-to-market prestige-like products at a very, very competitive prices. You're bringing in not only the younger consumer who relate, and especially the teens relate to that, you know, to that proposition. They're trying these products at a very, again, very competitive pricing. Uh, and then immunizing those those consumers. They're also bringing in more skincare. They recently acquired Naturium, which is a free off, and it's another uh, component of the, the, the investment case that they bring in free of uh, ingredients to, uh, to the mass consumer who otherwise wouldn't be able to afford at that price point. Uh, meantime, Andrea, you're joining us on a, a day where we got the jobs data and some wage data in, in there as well. Year-on-year -year wage is up 4-1, inflation's running 3-2, uh, this, this great channel we're in where real wages are, are, are growing. I just wonder what kind of lift you think that gives the consumer, along with sort of financial conditions, asset prices, equi uh, home equity pro uh, that's been built up over the last few years. What does that mean for the consumer right now? 
Yes, I think you comment on a, a very specific point. Uh, obviously, ELF is not um, is not immune, and so is the same consumer staples industry that I cover. I cover 25 names within consumer staples between beverages and HPC. And as long as consumers have that employment and uh, and their wages are going the right direction, we are seeing still the consumer quite resilient. Uh, obviously, there are pockets of, of that consumer that is more cautious. But within that entry-level consumer, we're still seeing enough uh, demand for uh, at minimum. We're not seeing a lot of movement into private label. We are seeing consumers are still resilient to, to brands. Yeah, if you go back and watch my videos from 2019, uh, when I was buying ELF stock, I made a very simple case around ELF, right? Uh, growing brand, it was a turnaround at that time, right? Uh, but I made a few key points. One is they were starting to become very successful on social media. A lot of big YouTubers, including uh, somebody that was massive back in those days, like whose name was Jeffree Star, was doing some ELF videos, and that was, uh, I think, a, a kind of a game changer for it, right? And now we're in 2024, and now people are, are finally seeing this, right? Uh, the other thing I called out back then is I explained that ELF, because their products were so high quality and such cheap prices, that they would be successful even if you were talking about a high-end unemployment environment, even if you were talking about recession, uh, inflation, they can handle it all, right? And guess what? We've had all those situations. We had a once-in-a-hundred-year Rona come out of nowhere, right? We had, obviously, unemployment spike massively during that situation. Then we went into a massive inflation spell. And despite all that, that, that's gone on, it all played out exactly kind of how I thought it was, right? They were just going to continue to expand. I didn't expect it to go this well. It went even much better than I anticipated. But in terms of ELF, it's one of those stocks that pretty much is always a buy. Um, they're just an incredible company that's just, I mean, you, you know, they're up there on, on the Mount Rushmore of best companies, most well-run companies of the past five years. I'd put it like that, okay? Then let's go ahead and get into Meta. Long picks. Mark Mahaney, Evercore ISI, head of internet research, joins us now. So, Mark, you have a buy on Meta, price target of 550. So, which raises the question there's not a ton of headroom between where it is now, 523 and 550. You're up around 25 times earnings. They've announced their first dividend. I guess the question is there anything left for the market uh, to, uh, to be pleasantly surprised by here? The, the truth, Mike, is uh, there probably isn't a lot. Um, it, this is a small buy for us. Uh, you know, fully respect the move that we've seen uh, year to date and over the last 18 months. This is one of the biggest pivots I think I've seen in my 25 year career. Uh, a stock that corrects 90 percent and then comes back to all time highs. By the way, I think Netflix and Spotify are going to do the same thing. But it's just rare you see that. Um, uh, but there are some, you know, I think this is a compounder here. I think it can hold this multiple, Mike. I, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, 22, 23, 24 times earnings, something like that for an asset that I think can sustain 20 percent plus earnings growth. That's legit. And then there are these kind of longer term new growth drivers like WhatsApp monetization. So I don't think it's just about holding the current valuation. Meta deserves to trade at a bigger valuation. Meta deserves to be trading in a forward P in the 30s easily. If they're putting up 20 percent revenue growth this year. You've got to slap a 30 or a 44 P on it. To have it at a 20 is just, that's just not understanding how, how stocks are value. That's the best way I can put that. That doesn't make any logical sense. So if a company's growing revenues at 20 plus percent and it's a safe, great business model, you have to. You have to put a forward P of the 30s or the 40s on it. That's just bottom line with that, right? Facebook marketplace and then maybe maybe virtual you know reality augmented reality with their reality labs business maybe so there's some things to stick around with but it's a smaller buy for us here no question about it yeah and if you do think that netflix and spotify can do that that round trip after those nasty sell-offs it, it got it must mean that you think you know there's at least 10 plus percent upside in each one of them because you know netflix is i guess it peaked around 700 uh, or thereabouts what's going to get it there not that far away. Well, you remember what uh, last peaked uh, Netflix? It was that, um, um, uh, shoot, the, the, the South Korean uh, drama thriller. Oh, yeah, it's a good game. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> th thank you. Thank you. I've forgotten <laughs> what that was. Anyway, it's coming again. We're going to see it again this year. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's just one thing. But this really just strong sub growth. Look, step back on Netflix. This is what's happening. You're getting back to 20 million a year sub ads. The, the, uh, w uh, an industry that was seeing rising in competitive intensity for like three or four years up until 2021, that's waning now. Free cash flow is inflecting up for a Netflix. And then uh, there are some interesting new growth drivers out there. I'm sorry, there are big growth drivers out there for Netflix. There's this paid sharing initiative, which has worked out really well. And this ad supported business, they took the best streaming business in the world and they cut it by 30%. Of course, that increases the TAM. So there's a is Netflix still a buy? 
I would say it's still a decent buy, uh, but it's certainly not the buy it was, you know, a couple of years ago when that stock was trading 100 something, 200 something dollars just a couple of years ago, back in 2022. Uh, the summer of 2022, I actually bought Netflix stock for the first time ever. I never bought Netflix stock before, and I actually bought it, made some good money on it, sold. I probably should have just ended up holding the shares in the end because it's gone up several hundred dollars more since that time. But, uh, you know, Netflix, another one of those companies that pretty much is always a buy. Um, but it's not nearly, you know, that upside's not there that was there a year or two ago, right? Good reasons to stick with Netflix, but it's a small buy. It's very hard to find dislocated buys in tech today. We should all be acknowledge that and just be if more. If I recall, I picked up some shares for like 185 back in like 22, which is just insane. Just in our long positions in tech. Uh, Mark, earlier this week, I was at the Sohn conference where I sat down with Josh Resnick of Jericho Capital. It's a long, short uh, equity fund that participates in the TMT space, Tech Media Telecom. He really likes Meta. Um, and the reason is he thinks that their kind of AI targeted advertising monetization potential is just superior to their peers. And I'm curious, sure. based on your channel checks, do you agree with that? Just the ability for AI to pinpoint certain ads at certain times of day, knowing the colors per potentially that uh, a user might like and be more um, likely to click on a certain ad. Uh, is Meta kind of the, the best in class when it comes to using AI for advertising? Or do you think there are others out there that are doing uh, similar things that, that people should be paying attention to? I've got nothing but respect for Josh Resnick. He's one of the smartest investors I've ever worked with. Uh, I think he's dead right when it comes to uh, to Meta. People are looking for all the Gen AI plays. What chip plays can I find? What infrastructure plays can I find? I've got the killer, and he does too. He's got the killer uh, app winner uh, off of Gen AI, and it's Meta. They used AI to completely revamp. They were forced to, but completely revamp their ad tech stack. And they've also used it, by the way, to increase their, improve their user stack. I mean, you know, th this has gone from a social media company to a media company, the way they bring in the content. You've seen it. You've seen a rising engagement on the site. So they've really done a wonderful job here. It was very hard to see that, really to look at that about two years ago. But if you had had, you would have realized on a big correction, you want to make this your big, your biggest long. So I, I, I think that call is absolutely right. If you're looking for the app play for AI, it's right here. It's meta. So is meta still a buy? Right, it's obviously gone up tremendously, and do I view it as uh, a dangerous stock, a safer stock than I view like let's say other big techs? And the simple answer is: Is Meta stock a buy? The answer is yes. Is it far safer than pretty much all other big techs? Yes, as well. And the reason being is you're getting Facebook, you're getting Facebook Messenger, you're getting Instagram, you're getting Threads you're getting WhatsApp and you're getting Oculus and the VR opportunity long-term, right? And so it's just hard to find a company that has that many major big businesses out there trading at a forward P in the twenties with 20% plus revenue growth expected with probably even, uh, well, I would say not probably for almost for sure, better bottom line growth with a balance sheet that it has there, right? With a still a founder led company, which is hard to find in big tech nowadays. And so when you put all those those components together, it's still a buy. It's it's going to a thousand, you know. It's going to a thousand, and uh, then we'll then we'll see where where things shake out from there. What could negatively affect Meta stock price? What could damage it? At this point in time, it would take a black swan event, you know, some sort of epic recession. Obviously, everybody in the advertising space always gets hit in that sort of situation, right? Uh, what other black swan event could happen? I mean, if iOS and, and Android both change their terms of service in some substantial way that somehow really dented Meta's business model, but it seems like they already did that game, you know, a few years ago. So at this point in time, I think it's it's hard to even see a black swan event taking down Meta, right? They've already dealt with the government on so many different angles over the years, and the government's going to be very tied up with Apple, in Google and Amazon over this next few years that they can't take on Meta as well. That's just, you know, and they already dealt with Meta. They already did so much with Meta over like a five-year span. So now it's it's Apple's, Google's, and, and uh, Amazon's really time to go through that whole process, right? And I think Amazon's the least I'm worried about in regards to that. So the moral of the story is Meta's still a buy. Is it the buy it was at 2022? No. Is it still a moneymaker stock? Yes. Is it a safe play? Yes. Um... Uh, 
you know, it's just, if it was a one trick pony, if it was only Facebook and you didn't get Instagram threads, WhatsApp and all those other things, I wouldn't be interested in this stock. It'd be too dangerous. It'd be like, man, if anything happens that way. But when you're that diversified and you got 3 billion plus users, you know, it's, it's all gravy. And especially, I mean, they got, mon they got growth levers all over that company. It's ridiculous. All right, next one up here. Apple lays off 600 employees. First significant round of job cuts in years? This is interesting. Is buzzing about Apple layoffs, cutting more than 600 employees, according to a new state filing in California. The layoffs are the first for Apple since the pandemic and come shortly after the company shuttered its self-driving car project. Unlike many of its big tech peers, Apple was more conservative with its hiring during COVID, the reduction in headcount also comes with Apple lagging behind its other peers in the Magnificent Seven. But we've we've seen this, Carl, where companies who were aggressive in hiring and, and boosting their headcount during the pandemic then has to kind of do this revision to the mean and, and cut some more jobs. Apple is kind of a contra to that example, although now you see 600 uh, layoffs. Yeah, although uh, it's hard to argue that it's bitten very much at the macro level. Goldman has a piece out a couple of moments ago. Just argue. Apple is so lucky. Let me explain to you how Apple is so lucky. Apple's going through a bad time, very tough times for the business model. Their numbers are very weak. Their numbers could get even weaker here in the short term. This is, like Things are not good at Apple right now. And there's so many questions about innovation and where this company is getting growth from in the future. And on top of that, they got the government coming after them. But they're so lucky this is all going on in a good market. Because I'm telling you, if this wasn't all going on in a good market where the s and P's at all-time highs and the NASDAQ's at all-time highs and all these other big tech stocks are running, Apple would be an $80 stock today, a $90 stock today. It'd be devastating. But since it is a great market right now and it's great for big tech, Apple's holding decent. Now, keep in mind, it's still, what, underperforming the market 20 percentage points or whatever this year. They're lucky. They're very lucky. I'm telling you, if, if Apple is going through what they're going through right now in 2022, it'd be a $70 stock. <laughs> $70 stock. So they're very lucky. Why they think we can have above consensus GDP growth this year and inflation coming down and getting three Fed cuts. They're, they say, we're often asked, are those two theses contradictory and they just don't think so no and and that kind of echoes what we heard from hotsius earlier today uh you know with the lake como as the backdrop yeah. uh but <laughs> it's just remarkable what we saw with with payrolls this morning and just the overall state of the economy right now yeah and you know do you, do i think there's more apple job cuts coming i don't think there's substantial more apple job cuts coming and the reason being is one apple didn't over higher like a lot of the other big tech companies did during that kind of 2020 2021 time frame like meta did and many other companies okay so i just don't think there's as much fat to cut at, Met, at apple as there was some of these other companies right and then additionally i do believe apple can actually get back to growth next year uh they're supposed to come out with bigger iphones and i think they're going to sell well anytime apple comes out with a bigger iphone it sells freaking well and so I do believe Apple will get back to growth next year. And so that leads me to think there's probably not more big job cuts coming for Apple. You know, if anything, it'll be another like small cut, but nothing like huge there. Okay. All right, let's get into this last one and I'm explain what's good here and what's bad and scary here. So everybody can kind of understand that. Santella. Yes, the big March jobs, jobs, jobs report hitting the wires. Uh, Let's non watch that market. Payrolls, watch that market. A whopping 303,000, that best, most estimate, and goes right along with the whisper number, which was higher than the estimates due to the strength in ADP. 303,000, that's the juiciest number that we've had going back to. Hold on, before we get into this, I'm interested because as I'm recording this, the market's closing in less than 30 minutes from now. I just want to see if stocks held their gains. Um, here into the close. Let, let's go ahead and check out my stocks and we'll check out big tech because uh, I'm very, very interested to see what's going on here. If trading view ever pulls up, there we go, baby. Okay, let's go ahead and see if these stocks held their own. Okay, so, oh man, I got like a million stocks on here right now. But uh, yeah, Planet, looks like Meta 2.9%, Amazon 2.6%. 
Nordstrom's doing decent, NVIDIA's doing decent, Texas Rodas Palantir, Nike Elf's down, Fubo's down. So it, they look like they've held gains decent, but not great. And Tesla was crazy today. I don't know if you guys heard that. Reuters put out some report about they're not building the the, the Model 2 or whatever you want to call it. And then Elon came out and said it's baloney. So, yeah, that's fascinating. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's the advantage of being on X. You know, Elon Musk can respond to something like that. But anyways, Tesla stock crap, like, you know, was crashing. Then Elon Musk came out and said that's baloney. Like, they're, they're just making up stuff. And then Tesla stock came back. But it's still overall a net negative day just pretty much on the back of that Reuters report. Ba, ba, ba. 303,000 equals May of 23 right on the nose. To find a higher number, you go back to January of last year. If we look at the unemployment rate, 3.8. Now, this is a biggie because last month's 3.9 was the highest unemployment rate since Jan of 22. So it did moderate just a bit. If we look at average hourly earnings, which were up one-tenth of a percent last month. That was the lowest month-over-month change since March of 21. Let's call it three years. First of all, that was revised now to up two-tenths, and the new number is up three-tenths of a percent, exactly as expected. Year-over-year, 4.1, as expected, down from 4.3. Actually, when you look at 4.1, you have to go back to uh, June of 21, June of 21, uh, t excuse me, yeah, 4.1. June of 21, find a lower number. That's a really big deal when you consider uh, what the average hourly earnings on a year-over-year -year basis have been doing. Average work week, 34.4 hours. That's a tenth higher than we were expecting and a tenth higher than the rearview mirror, which is 34.3. And finally, U6, that's the underemployment rate 60 excuse me 7.3 7.3 and and labor force participation wow 62.7 62.7 that is a nice jump uh we were at 62.5 last month and 62.6 was expected so these numbers are definitely stronger than expected and one would expect rates to be higher and in oh, wait, before we go further here okay uh a few problems, right? First potential problem here is a lot of these government numbers have been revised down. So it'll come out and it'll be some good number. And then all of a sudden, a month later, they do these revisions. And then all of a sudden you hear, oh, it wasn't quite as strong as, as people anticipate. By the way, we're rocking the Tesla hoodie today. I got FSD on the Mall S right now. And woo, it's crazy. It's uh, pretty dang impressive. But um, that, that's that's an issue, right? The revisions. The other potential thing in problem here is, and this is a pretty big problem, is if the economy is being seen as too hot, that means inflation is not dead. If inflation is not dead, that means the Fed's not done, which once again is a chokehold on things that will eventually affect us very negatively, right? And so, and I spoke about that on the main channel video uh, last night. If you don't watch that channel, it's called Financial Education. That's my main channel, right? And um, yeah, so that's that's in, that that that's a little scary, right? The longer the Fed keeps rates up here in the fives, I think the more risk that down the road we're going to have a big problem and we could have a big recession. But predicting the timing of that is is it's impossible. A year from now, six months from now, two years from now, three years from now, it's impossible to predict it. But we just know the longer the Fed keeps rates elevated, the more you're likely going to have a recession, and the bigger the recession can be. Right? So. That's the scary part. They of are 470 now, 470. So we're up about five basis points in a two year. And the 10 year was right around 432 uh, before the number. It's now 437, 437. So it's up five. And I can't stress enough any yield close in tens above 433 on a weekly basis should keep momentum to the downside in price and the upside in yield. And many were looking for the unemployment rate to move higher than that 3.9. The fact that it backed up a bit is very important. And there's been much written about the number of weekend days in February versus March. A lot of issues there. Uh, but all in all, it certainly does seem like the numbers are better than expected. And in my opinion, probably make the Fed's decision that much more complicated. Yeah, absolutely it does. Uh, makes the Fed likely still not be able to cut anytime soon. So, you know what's weird? Yields up and stocks up, right? Dollar up and stocks up? Strange. 
strange. You got the Russell green, you have the Dow green, you have NASDAQ very nicely green, yet you have the dollar up and rates up? Weird. Very weird. Very weird. Okay, that is not, that's not too normal in regards to that, okay? Uh, very, very strange. Anyways, guys, appreciate you joining me as always. Thank you so much for being here. Once again, pin comment down there to access the one-day sale when it drops in nine days from now. Access my number one course ever. See the moves I'm making in my Patreon portfolio each week. Plus, get access to the Discord chat in the Patreon. Much love and have a great day.